Okay, ready? Yep. Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo, and I swear Stay Tuned is not supposed to be like an all Ford channel, but we're working on an F word project again this week, but it's for a really good reason. It's because my buddy Derek from Vice Grip Garage is coming up here to work on a sweet street strip project with me in a couple of weeks, and we need something to power that car, and this little Roller 302 is gonna do it. Let's get started on making this thing a little bit more serious. Right now it's zero serious. That's zero serious right there. That is right now. Stock is a rock and been through it all. Cool. Oh, hey guys, merch update. We have the Stay Tuned Crewnecks back in stock. And this time we have blue crewnecks and black. So the first time ever, this is the down and dirty East Coast Speed logo. And last time these sold out super fast. So if you want one, grab them now. And we appreciate it. There you go. All right, she's off. Got Great. it. Great. Yep. All right. So this is the plan. There is a 67 fair lane at my other shop. It is like an 80s street strip car. And it is sweet. It has like an old school quarter of a cage. Just goes behind the driver's head, which will do absolutely nothing in a rollover. Uh, it has, it was a four speed car. It's got tinned in wheel wells. It's got a real vibe to it. It's actually very cool looking. And it's something that I said to Derek like a year ago on text, you know, I was like, hey, I found this thing on Facebook and it feels like yours, man. And he said, all right, yeah, I'm in, I'm gonna buy it. And I'm gonna come up and we're gonna turn it into a car. So that sounds awesome, well, let's go. Don't threaten me with a good time. We got kind of a three part plan going. Number one, stay tuned guys, they're gonna put a motor together for Derek. Number two, he's gonna come out here we're gonna spend a week taking this 67 Fairlane and thrashing it together. I know for a fact this car has not moved since the 80s under its own power. You can just no, tell. at least. Yeah, not since, you know, Reagan was president and I don't know, the where's the beef lady was still alive. <laughs> she was still kicking. This is an 87 Mustang 302, which we literally had to Google if it's metric or standard fasteners on it. We don't know a ton about these motors. Barb is the Ford guy. Yeah, yeah. All I know is that these made stock around 200-ish horsepower, which I would call moderately depressing for any V8. Um, when you're 16, it's a rocket. Oh, yeah. Well, when you're 16, everything's a rocket. And it turns out, which I thought, is that this thing is supposed to be a mix of metric and standard, which yeah. is always fun. It's called, how many bolts am I going to strip today? That's the game you play with, with, game. with these mid-80s motors. What's up, zero? Yeah. We got an 87 because it's a roller motor. They have roller camshafts, and they're a little bit stronger, I think. They're mm -hmm. not forged bottom ends, or they are forged bottom ends? I don't know. No, they're not forged bottom ends. Uh, I think they had forged pistons in some of the Fox bodies. I don't know offhand which ones. It's up in the air. There was like a crossover year. So we're gonna dig into this thing. We paid 800 bucks for this sucker, complete from a guy named Pino, which uh, I know two things about him. One, he's got a more Italian name than me or Barb over here. And two, he's in a Mustangs. All right, mm -hmm. that's really it. Solid guy though, Pino Toy Box in North Jersey. We appreciate you, buddy. So here's the thing we have to talk about and address right away. We're gonna strip this thing down. And Derek said, just give me some junk that I can drive home, put a carburetor on it, and we'll rock and roll from there. And he's sort of, you know, a man after my own heart. He loves to dig in the junkyard, make some magic out of it. But here in State 2, we like to make everything pretty spicy. We just can't. Yeah. We just can't. I just can't put a carburetor on a stock motor and give it to my guy and expect it to be cool. So this episode is gonna come out before Derek gets here and we build the car. That smells we're gonna do, like... We're gonna do quite a bit of upgrades and we're gonna, you know, like Oof. I said, it'll be our little secret. So I need you to just, don't tell Derek. That's a deal between me and you guys. Don't tell him. For real though. Yeah, for real. Don't tell him. Look at this thing already. Still looks awful, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Somebody went ham with the hose clamps on this thing. What is and that not the right size. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna tear this sucker down, have a look at the internals, and decide just how gnarly we're gonna go with it. It's going to be good. Yeah. Jeez, that smells bad. Not good. Nah. Smells like the bottom of the ocean. 
That smells like a porta potty at the end of a four day festival. <laughs> smells like a squirrel committed suicide in there. <laughs> Disgusting. Give me, give me some more. I got you. Oh, honestly, dude, it smells like somebody got a <laughs> jellyfish pregnant in here. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> uh, let's hope, take the valve covers off and then take the intake off. Yes. Okay. Let's see what's in here. I love valve cover taking off. Then you can look inside this. Taking offers. Hey. Yeah, it's all brown. You know. Yeah, but look at that, though. It's like, it's okay. the, it's I okay. mean, do you see sludgies? It's not sludge. It's not terrible. It looks like no crazy sludge. They did some probably regular maintenance, did oil changes, you know. Out with the old, in with the crude kind of thing on a regular basis, which I like, you know. This is what I think an 80,000 mile 40 year old motor should look like, or 35 year old motor. Same thing here. Pretty identical. That one's up on the cam, but everything looks solid, says so that one. I've seen worse for sure. Got it? Yep. Okay. More of the same. You see a little bit of smuts got in, came off the top of the intake, but it's pretty clean, same deal. Nothing looks bent, nothing looks wrecked. It's clearly a roller motor. It's got the dog bones and the spider in here. So it's all there so far. What'd you say that was tonight? Arancello. Arancello. You made that in a toilet, prison style? Mm -hmm. The best way to do it. Bathtub. Oh, that's right. Down the hatch. Mm. God. Delicious. I was on Facebook Marketplace today. They have some guys two brand new prison toilets. <laughs> I was like, we should get one for the show. <laughs> That'd be sick in the corner. There's not even a lid or anything. Yeah, I don't think they need those. Incredible. Yeah. It's just like a giant stainless toilet, and the back of it is a sink. It's pretty. It's pretty intense. Grab that. Okay. Again, gasket looks good. One thing we really need to worry about a little bit is these cylinder walls, but this is the only one that has any corrosion in it. It looks like it just came right off when I rubbed on it. Have we tried turning this motor over at all? Yeah. Oh, like a dream. So you see a little bit of a Evidence of just a little bit of corrosion, just probably some, some water sitting. Looks good, not much of a ridge. And there's a ton of wear. The original bore size will stay true at the very top where the rings never get to it. And you can kind of tell how much wear there is in the motor from that, if there's a giant ridge there. And it's not much, it's not too bad. Motor looks good so far. I'm gonna pull this spider and these dog bones and all the lifters out. Barb's gonna yank the water pump and front cover off, and then we'll have this thing pretty far stripped down. Maybe we'll hit it with some spray paint. All right, our 87 Mustang 5.0 high output motor is torn down. I can back give it a scrub and quick spray paint and start putting on some good parts. But that's it for tonight. I'm going to sleep. All right, as you know, stay tuned as a pizza team with a racing problem. Today's order came in from Tornetta's over in lovely Pottstown, Pennsylvania. This is a vodka sauce. It's incredible. Provolone on top. Mm. Outrageous. We run on pizza and gasoline over here. Stop the like Pennsylvania pizza. Out, out of control. Okay, uh, if you want, you can buy us a pizza by hitting this button up here. We run on pizza at this shop. Uh, we super appreciate it. This week, a man named Finley McPherson out of Scotland sent us this pizza. We super duper appreciate it. And everybody else has sent us a pizza. Uh, rock and roll. If you are going to Tornetta's in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, tell them to stay tuned and sent you. Uh, 
maybe one day uh, we'll see you in there. Thanks again. Let's get to it. All right, cool. We're back at it. It is the next day, another late night. We're getting started. Uh, me and Tyler are here. We're going to give this, a, Zimmy already gave it a quick scrub on the exterior of this block on our roller 302. I'm going to scrape what's left of the head gaskets. Tyler, you can pull the pan off this thing. Cool. And we're going to get ready to install some hot white parts. So it's still cooling in it. Do you want me to spin it or do you want to stay on? Uh, I drained the block. And the main reason for that is we got Derek coming in about a week and a half. Woo -woo. But we know it's going to take us longer than four days to make V12 headers. So we're doing this. We're building up this little roller 302. Zach is starting the welding on the V12 headers, and we are just all hands on deck. Barb is somewhere feverishly pumping out emails. <laughs> Everybody is doing their part. I ain't doing. <laughs> I'm doing my part. Russo is probably in like Belize or something. Yeah, Russo's in Belize. Sopa, sancocho, and banana. Mike's probably just ripping on Harleys. That's all. Both of those are very true. Yeah, Coons is building a Harley and ripping it down the street in the snow. That, that shovel head was pretty, pretty tight. No, same. I mean, he was making me get back into it. I'm like, dude, man. Hardtail and everything, that thing's nice. Yep, that'll get you in trouble fast. <laughs> Hell yeah. Back I think feel. I think guaranteed. I think feels a hundred times faster than actually. Hundred percent. I think it's terrifying at forty miles an hour. Guaranteed. Is it a sporty? No, that's a show. Yeah. Which is the opposite of like every Japanese or you know European bike ever owned, where you're going. 175 and it feels like it feels like you get off and take a little stroll around and get back on. In there? Yeah, that's fine. You want it to feel fast, you want to go fast. Should be wearing my safety squints. So? Where are my safety coins? Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Engage the force field once in a while. <laughs> All right, Tyler is scraping the last of the garbage. Old gasket's off. I'm gonna run a tap on a drill through these head bolts. Nice and easy. Just make sure there's no junk in them and they go in nice and smooth. If there is trash in these holes, can really make a mess. You know, it'd be tough to get the right torque on them or get them started. I'm just going in nice and slow. I don't think dirt compresses too well. Dirt doesn't compress well. And we're gonna blow them out too when you're done. If there's a bunch of oil in them, you know, you can honestly like turn it into hydraulic fluid and blow it right <laughs> out the side of the block. So again, do your best. Just take two seconds, clean this off. We gotta blow everything off again anyway, so it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna do a little dip into some old motor oil. Get some just to make it clean. A little bit. Let's get another can of this. You got another one? Yeah, see what else we got. We're just gonna try to wash as much junk out of this thing as we can. And we're gonna start talking about transforming this little beastie into something a little bit more serious. A little bit more spicy. Oh wow, it did get me good. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Gonna have to drive Tony home tonight. I know, I feel like... Jimi Hendrix, is that you? <laughs> Same thing, we're just gonna turn it around. Piston rings will bring on the junk up to the top of the boards, wipe it out. Call today. A little bit more air time and send it home. Come on. She moves. Ah, 
last one hit my hand there. I saw that. But you got it, I think. Something happened. Yeah, it's coming. All right, we have our Junkyard Roller 302, just about ready to put some hot parts in. And I told you before, Derek just said, hey man, grab an old five liter, put a carburetor and intake manifold on it, and we'll throw it in my fair lane and I'll be off and running. And that didn't seem spicy enough for us, to be honest. I wanted to go a little bit, you know, gnarlier, a little bit nastier. We like to make horsepower here. We like to make things really rip. And that's what we're gonna do here. But this is the best part. I want this thing to look pretty mild, and be pretty wild. So it's gonna be full on spice. But here's the thing, I don't want Derek to know. It's gonna look like your average Craigslist rebuild, the old aerosol overhaul, but it's gonna be a lot more than that. Come on over here. We are gonna put on a full set of Summit nasty aluminum cylinder heads, a big old camshaft, and really make this thing scream. I'm talking upwards of maybe like 380, 400 horsepower out of this thing. And don't worry, because we're gonna make it look terrible it's gonna look like regular old garbage and it's gonna absolutely scream and that's where i need your help with don't tell derek i want it to be a surprise when he gets here we're gonna throw these things on we're gonna paint them up we're gonna make it look terrible it's gonna look like an old beat up junkyard motor which is a little carburetor on top that's the goal and that's what we're gonna do here again remember hashtag don't tell derek all right so step one is install these nasty summit cylinder heads these are 59cc chamber, 185 CFM runners. And they are going to absolutely scream. It's gonna really wake this little stock motor up. Uh, yeah, so I'm thinking, just between me, I'm gonna hit up Derek. I'm like, just don't watch this episode till later. Don't worry about it, man. He's a busy guy. I bet he won't, if, especially if I ask him to. And I wanna see you guys on social media going, you understand, Tony built this nasty motor. That's between us. All right, step one, I'm gonna acetone up the ceiling surfaces on these brand new cylinder heads from Summit Racing. And right on here too, right on the block. You do this with a paper towel and it's gonna shred itself with all these sharp edges and it's gonna leave garbage everywhere. So I'm doing it with a microfiber, old t-shirt works great, maybe even better. This is what I got right here though. Just don't do it with either a blue rag or a regular paper towel because you're gonna be chasing fuzz around half the day. These motors make about 210 horsepower stock and we're gonna just about double that with proper heads and camshaft. They're, you know, I've been clowning on them a little bit like holy output, but listen, Windsor motors are awesome. They rev super hard and it's gonna make a bunch of power. You put some parts on them and they turn into little monsters. I'm gonna lay this sucker right on there. And then down, there she goes. Okay, I'm gonna crank this up so it doesn't fall off. Go find some head bolts. So these heads fit on a 351 or a 302. And the 351s have bigger head bolts, head studs, you know, in the block. So if you're gonna run them on a 289 302 motor you have to put in these little bolt collars just to accept that smaller head bolt Let me see yeah just steps it down that 716 size arp hardware a couple things with arp stuff really quickly things you need to know when you're running ARP hardware. Uh, number one, take this lube that comes with the hardware, run it on both sides of the washer, and then you want to make sure that the concave is pointed towards the bolt head, and you're ready to rip. And that lube, just make sure that you get the right torque on these bad boys, basically allowing them to slide against the head and the bolt without having too much friction screwing up your torque values there specs are going to be always right in the literature 
And they do their own specs, so you run it a little bit differently. Three equal steps to 70. All right, I'm just gonna snug these in. Don't go nuts. It's an eighth drive. Okay, find your torque sequence. One line, I'm just gonna torque this sucker down. I figured this, Derek's coming all the way up to PA. Figure, show him some proper hospitality. Yeah, he could show up and have a 235 horsepower motor in his car, or this little nasty small block. It's actually gonna do something. She gotta rake pulses a little bit. All right, take two. Drop on the dials? Nope. Nope. There we go. Good? Yep. Yeah. We're building this engine part one. Part two, he's showing up together. We're going to make that thing that hasn't moved since the 80s into a running driving car, which would be awesome. If we have time, we're going to take it to Maple Grove, at least down the parking lot or something. Nice. And then he's going to drive it home because he's a lunatic, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> at that point, we, we give him our... thing manual? It is? It's going to be. Yeah, it's an old four-speed car. It's a 390. This car is a 67 Fairlane 500 390 four-speed car originally. It's pretty radical. So. There we go. All right, consider that done. Yeah, slam the cam. Bump stick time. I have this sweet Summit. Small block Ford camshaft. This is, you know, Ford does the letter cams. This is like an F303, so it's pretty rowdy. It's a 274, 282 total duration camshaft, 550, 540 lift. It's gonna be nasty. This is a proper billet cam that Summit is making now, and this is going to work killer. I'm just slathering it in assembly lube right now. And I'm going to put it in, send this sucker home. That's it. I'll grab the thrust plate. Hold that sucker in, new timing set, and our internal upgrades are done. It has dowels too. All right, now we're going to do a quick taping down of this thing. Because like I said, we're going to make this thing look terrible. Proper, perfect, terrible. All right, Tyler is laying down tactical tape here. Tactical tape. Looking good. I'm going to get the old valve covers. If you hate taping stuff off as much as I do, <laughs> just get old engine parts and then paint them willy-nilly. Right, sweet. So obviously, Derek would look at this and say, wow, shiny aluminum heads. Well, we're going to fix that. Here's a fun trick. If you want to tape something off, there's a sharp edge. You just tap it a bunch of times, a little mallet, and it comes right off. Boom. Look at that. Tyler's just shoving a little bit of tape in the spark plug holes, and you're saying to yourself, obviously, if you just paint this thing blue or black or something, Derek's still gonna be able to see the summit right on the side. Got a plan for that too. Here we go. All right, we're fully committed at this point. Just gonna wipe the summit off of here. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
coming off. We appreciate you. better yeah pretty good let me go a little, little primer that'll be just fine all right one more hose down with brake clean we're gonna paint this sucker up a little primer they never tell what cylinder heads i don't know what you're talking about cool all right one last hose down this secret is going to be between me you guys and the patron saying a brake clean sweet i'm gonna now blast this thing a little bit of primer and some ford blue literally everywhere Try to make it look bad while being pretty kick-ass. And since if I inhale any more fumes, then I feel like I'm going to see the face of God. I'm going to put this right over top. Okay. Oh, it's so hot. Woo! Here we go. Trying to get a little texture out of that. Get something for it to stick to. Board light blue, here we go. All right, I am just about out of paint. Motor's looking killer. We're really looking terrible, which is perfect. And uh, it's almost 11 o'clock, which means I'll see you guys in the morning. We're gonna let this dry. I think it looks perfectly passable. That's very pedestrian. It's certainly plausible that it's a, it's a little 5-0. All right, get some, get, some, get in there. We gotta get shots now. Make it look good and bad. Tomorrow we have a new oil pan. We'll put a water, new water pump on it and an intake that'll look like somebody just tossed a four barrel on a fuel injector motor and it'll be our little secret. Remember, don't tell Derek. All right, in the stark light of day, this thing actually looks maybe too good. Uh, you know, we just want like a very regular, boring junkyard slapped together, aerosol overhaul build. Might have to dirty up, you know, a little bit more than this, but it looks pretty killer. I'm going to start now fitting up the valve train, put the rocker studs in, measure for push rods, uh, throw the intake on, oil pan, and keep on rocking. All right, so we're going to run a hydraulic roller set up in this motor. We got a brand new set of Summit roller hydraulic lifters. All right, I'm going to load those in. I'll do a little bit of oil just in the bores. Nothing crazy. Just hit every bore, that way when I go back to it, I can just give it a little spin and it'll be obviously not dry from when we, when we had loaded in everything. Barb's making headers. Already. We're doing a couple episodes at once because V12 headers are gonna take us about 18 days. And in case you're wondering, we put out an episode every week. So I'm gonna grab some pipe dope and get all these um, rocker studs in with the push rod guide plates, torque them all down, and then I'll get ready to put the push rods in there. Down the hatch. Mm. <sighs> Delicious! The flats have to be in line with the crankshaft. Guess which side is up. And then get that little dog bone over there and you can kind of wiggle it. And once they both fall down, that's it. Kind of put it in the middle. And one of these tabs from this big bolt down spider will hold it in place. And then that's it. 
Spiders and dog bones. Spiders and dog bones. Real wild kingdom over here today. Got it. A real animal. Bored! Yeah. What's up? All right, just to get this thing fired up, we are going to drop in the 6250 length factory push rods. So I have ordered up some 6450s. They'll be here in the morning, but tomorrow is too late. We gotta make noise tonight. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. The video hey, hey. comes out four seconds from now. Tomorrow. Yeah. Anyway, it's looking really good. You know, and by really good, I mean pretty plain and boring. But underneath, we know there's some there's some pretty mean stuff in there. Hashtag don't tell Derek. Yeah, don't tell Derek. Uh, we are gonna now drop on the rockers, rotate this thing around to whatever weird forward firing order there is, and set the preload in those hydraulic lifters. In the future, you know, the roller motors solid and the rollers, non -rollers are two different firing orders. Or the don't, HO motor and the non HO. You know don't tell me. Un, untell me that. Okay. Put that in it's reverse. It's going to be real. It's gonna... now, I've got the preload set on all of the lifters. It's now time to install the intake manifold. I'm just coming through a little acetone on the front side of the cylinder head. Right on the mating surface, I have a set of fresh gaskets. And then I'm going to be able to install oops, this Summit dual plane intake manifold. If I was being real here, bar boarded the hydraulic lifters and this dual plane, I would have gone single plane and solid roller really, really make it nasty. But it's all good. This will be a little bit more streetable. Um, there's a couple of tips I've got for you when you're doing your intake gaskets. One thing I like to do. Just get them all the way out of the box. There we go. Just tear in. Just have silicone right around each water port on both sides of the gasket. Nothing crazy. Standard stuff. I believe it now. I'll just kind of paint that in just to give it a chance of sealing up all that water it's got to do. So, four corners, we'll do that here. And it does two things. Number one, it helps seal that water up, but it also helps hold that gasket in place as you drop the intake on it. So come over here and just set that thing in there. Looks pretty good. Also, these little tabs hold hold the gasket in pretty nicely. We're gonna top it with one this of, thing. Never used one of those. It's a fire extinguisher. Oh shit. Yes. She's alive. Wow. All right, it's still coming out. Hey. This is a mess. So I've got this. You know what? I got to, this is my problem here. I got to unholster this bad boy. Get it, <laughs> get it live. You got some dikes? I'm gonna open this. Open this sucker. It's going to be sawed off when I'm done with it. There it is. Perfect. All right. So now you want to just take silicone. I like to use the aerosol stuff. And I'm just going to lay down a bead, snuggle it. That is significantly less effort than squeezing that tube. Yeah. 2024, man. Nobody's squeezing tubes anymore. A little blast under there and then my best welding impression. Boop. There you go. Like this game. Lift it, twist it, jam it in. It's this game I used to play at parties when I was in, back in college until they kicked me out. <laughs> More about that. So when I was in college for the first time, I was only there for like four months. I did get the boot. I had an 83 Honda VF750 Interceptor that I, dis I, that I drove in between the beds because we were on the first floor and I disassembled the whole thing. And my, I actually knew about that. My college roommate Russ hit me up recently. Appreciate you, Russ. He's like, oh man, it's been like 20 That's years. Cool. He never mentioned the motorcycle. I appreciate that, dude. He's like, oh, cool to reconnect. Seemed like a nice guy. He was a super nice dude. 
I didn't make it to Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving, they said. Uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving break. Don't, uh, don't come, come back. back. <laughs> You're done. Uh, you had a good run. I did. Was it the motorcycle in the, in the dorm room? Who knows? Was it the potato gun in the dorm room also? Could have been. Unlicensed firearms? Who knows? <laughs> oh, man. And that looks great. There she is, that's rock and rolling. That's what you meant to say. All right. You ordered up these finned up, kind of plain valve covers. I like the plain part. The fin part feels like some street rod stuff. So for now, we're going to rock them. We've got our mill. I think we're going to mill them out flat and just paint them black. And they'll actually work awesome because they've got plenty of room for that high lift camshaft and the rockers that are involved. But aren't going to give away too much, you know, too many speed mm -hmm. secrets. What's going okay. on there? I got you. Try to find that hole there, bud. Yo! You in there? I don't know. Let's get these suckers on. I, 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 they look all right. You know, I think they'll look great with the flat top and a little bit of... If I had one dollar for every time I heard about machining the top of these... I'm excited. I got off, that sweet milk. I would be so rich. I'm going to do it. You'd have eight You're bucks. not wrong. You'd they have eight all bucks. Look... Yeah. That feels like something these days. Yeah, that's like a whole whopper, right? <laughs> We'll do it for real at some point. What, like get jobs or something? Life, we're gonna do life for real? <laughs> Go back to school. Oh God. <laughs> That's something I don't wanna do. Yeah, same. No more. I didn't like it the first time. But we already talked about that. <laughs> didn't I don't know, it sounds like you had a pretty good time. <laughs> yeah, I did have a good, it didn't go great. All right, I'm just turning this thing upside down. We know that the Mustang oil pan isn't gonna fit. So we're gonna yank that sucker off and put on a pan that Barb has scienced out fully, deep, deep science work, that it's gonna fit into that Fairlane chassis. So we're gonna swap it out now. Mm -hmm. Because boy, well, you got that kind of time. What, uh, what is it? What is it for? Is it for the Fairlane? What? That this pan? Yeah. yeah. All right, it made a huge mess. Oh no, we were supposed to take the pan off upside down, right side up, and then everything I poured into the valley would have just been in our hands instead of back on the back. Oh, I here. see what you're saying. That was my plan. So we numb nutted this one. Yeah. So Got deep, it. Deep case of the old numb nuts. Got it. All right. Well. It's fine. We want it to look bad, it's gonna look bad. We did it. Crushed it. Nice work. Okay. So we're gonna check the pan depth. Anytime you put a pickup and a pan on together, make sure that there's like a quarter inch of clearance between the base, the very bottom of the pickup, and the pan. If there's none, it won't be able to suck oil into it and you'll blow your motor right up. If there's too much, same kind of thing. It's gonna slosh around and not do a good job of picking it up. Worst case scenario is that it's smashed in there though. It's like basically yeah. touching it. Because then it can, and mm -hmm. even if you're going real hardcore on some different kinds of engines, not you couldn't do it on this pickup, but on this one you could. You could put a little slit in here for like road racing stuff when you know the pan's gonna get smashed. At least it won't destroy the motor. So here we you go. Check this. Uh, yeah. Get a ruler or a tape. You or can do either way. A little modeling clay on here and see how much it squishes it. We, we don't have that. We certainly don't have that. <laughs> We're just a nice yeah. Seven inches. Looks like about ten and a half to me. Seven inches to the rail. Right, give me this. You got it there. Nice Look like ten and a half. That's probably because it was the back of the ruler. It's exactly seven inches. So then that sits how far back? Center of it is seven inches. Seven inches from where did I go from? Yeah, the inside. So it sits right here. Right on that flat. Yep. So now we're going to measure down into this thing. Just put, a, put an edge across it. That's fine. Eight inches. Seven and 
15 16 so it's about an inch it's quite a bit it's quite a bit it is it's a big pan it is so the the pickup's gonna sit there i'm mm -hmm. just gonna weld it i'm gonna cut it in the bandsaw we'll rotate it up and we're gonna cut it again in the bandsaw and flatten and rotate it, it back yeah okay it's that or we could cut it here add our three quarters of an inch but it's gonna push it too and far back in the pan. We don't think that's going to work. Yeah. Okay. Although, so you could rotate. Well, you could get a little spin on it, but then it's going to start to come up on. Yeah. It's going to get wonky because it's not in the right plane to just rotate it. Because you can, we can do it on the straight, which would be nice and I, easiest way to do it. Just add a piece of tube here, but that's going to push this too far back. And we I know it's going to hit the piece something. of three quarter inch tube. We're going to find something. I got something. We have a like a dust feet of it. pan. Nah, no dust pan. It's the night. <laughs> so crank it up, weld it back. You want to do it one at a time? <laughs> Give it a quick scrub and make it fit again. You got the ground on. Okay, never mind. There she is, all dialed in. That will be nice and solid. Rock and roll. All right, well you done, Barb. Well, all right, we're going to bolt up this oil pan just this 55 times. See you on the other side. Good. All right, we're filling up with some oil. Stab it in a distributor, throw a carb on it, and fire this sucker up. Well, maybe headers. And spark plugs, ignition wires, bell housing starter, a couple things. Just a couple of things, and then it goes boom, boom. I mean, vroom, vroom. That's the one. All right, before we can drag this thing off the stand and actually try to get it fired up in here, I'm going to stab in this Summit ready to run distributor. I've got it at top dead center, so I'll figure out this Ford firing order, which is different than the old 289, and get the wires on there. And I'm going to install these Summit headers that are actually for the Fairlane chassis. So I don't know what the code is on that chassis, but this is, these are the proper headers for that thing. Uh, and then we'll be ready to rock. So here we go. Find some wires, plug it in, add a little fuel and some spark and cross our fingers. You ready to try it? Yeah. Cause we're going to try to jump it off this. It's quite an arrangement you have here. All right. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. Didn't jump off the little makeshift stand we got going on here so far. That's good. I need to feed power here. Perfect. All right, there we go. Ready? Okay, ready? Yep. Let's do it. There we go. All right, it sounds pretty great. I think that's give me one good. more. Okay. what I'm talking about. That sounds awesome. It sounds great. All right, you that, is good. <laughs> that is good. That is good. That Damn. thing came right to life. It sounds amazing. It's wicked late on Thursday night. You're going to see what's well, really Friday morning. You're going to see this later today. Let's, gonna, let's turn the lights out before yeah. anybody else comes yeah. with the sirens and the, I don't know, mad faces. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We're super stoked. This thing is going to rip in Derek's fair lane. I cannot wait to get it rocking. Don't forget, don't tell Derek. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Later. Hit that off.